You know, there's two things you gotta have in a good chicken fajita. Number one, chicken. Number two, fajita. <laughs> one is that sizzle as you see it coming towards you on that plate. Two, it is the tender, juicy, smoky flavor of that chicken that you're gonna get in every bite and wrapped all in a homemade tortilla. Come on, I'm getting it ready. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by. What are we talking about? Fajita, I love me some fajita. Take my little senorita to get some fajitas. You wanna go get some fajitas I with do. me? Yeah. I do love me some fajitas. And you know, fajitas, I would say if you was to poll a Mexican food restaurant, I would say they're within the top three items that are always picked because they have that awe oh factor. What is it? Zzz, that sizzle when they bring. <laughs> you got choked on that sizzle. <laughs> My goodness. Really, to me, folks, there is two problems that's really wrong with chicken for most folks. Number one, some of them forget to take the feathers off of it. And number two is, it's dry and it's tough when you get through cooking it. But I'm finna show you how to make that chicken really tender, keep that moisture in there, but also lock in all that flavor. We are gloved up and ready to go. I mean, we was looking like neon, we was. But folks, when you talk about fajitas and they're made out of chicken, everybody be using one of these right here. A big old chicken breast, right? Well, I, I will go with you on that, I will, cause I like that. But folks, if we're gonna get the most flavor out of these chicken fajitas, what's holding them rest of that chicken up? Them thighs and them legs but they're gonna bring you so much more flavor. Now, you've seen in previous videos, we have done this, and I gotta have a knife. If we're gonna use thighs, and you can buy them that are skinless sometimes, and also boneless. Sometimes this is a really easy chore to do, and sometimes it takes a little doing to go ahead and get the coat off of them. And you can see we have a lot of interesting participants here that thinking to their self, I know, Dad, you always tell people, we're gonna save them skins and them bones, and we're gonna what? Make our own chicken broth. We are. Well, today, and you see that bone that's just laying right there? Just slice right down there beside it somewhere, and usually that thing will just peel right out of there. Just reach in there and get it around it. Try not to tear it plumb up, because we need it to sort of stay in this shape where it'll be a little easier to slice. Got them thighs skinned out, we did, and deboned. Now this chicken breast, and if you'll see, see how it's sort of got that shimmer to it? There's no skin on there, but folks, there is a little membrane on there. And to make chicken tender and really accept seasoning well, I may have given you this trick before. I'm gonna give it to you again. To break that membrane and to make that chicken cook even a little quicker, we're gonna take this rolling pin and we're just gonna pound it lightly to flatten it out just a tad. Folks, if you're gonna make fajitas and make them right, let's give them some flavor. I'm not talking about, well, let's go to the cupboard, get the salt and the pepper and maybe a little garlic powder and put on there. No, what are we talking about? We're talking about some dried chilies. I'm gonna get the most flavor out of a can. Now, these were sort of limbered up when I got them, but I just roasted them a minute. I just need you to get most of them seeds out of there. Not that they're gonna hurt nothing. Get rid of that stem chunker in there. What kind of chili is that? It is a ancho chili. It is one of my most favorite animals. It is. But also a cascavel chili. And let's go to making some good seasoning here. You can buy dried ancho chili powder, but to me it never tastes the same. Oh. It just doesn't have the flavor that this is going to bring out. Because you can put your sweat into it. Well, it's... <laughs> You see, about 40, I ain't, I ain't sweating too much, but I know what you mean. It's gonna cause some arthritis later on in life. Well, we about got that like I want it, we do. Now, you can buy cumin in a powder, right? But just like these peppers, I think you're gonna get so much more flavor when you just take whole cumin. When you get it to that point, let's go ahead and just pour it in a bowl here. And Shan said it, but I'm gonna say it again too. The aroma that's coming off of that, whew, it takes me back to a lot of good Mexican food that I've eaten in different places. So to that, we're gonna mix some of our mesquite seasoning and 
let's just call it that much, which is about the right amount. A little bit of garlic powder, not garlic salt, garlic powder. To that, we're gonna add some whole oregano. And just pour it out there in your fingers and then just go to crushing it a little. There's so much more flavor that comes out of all this when you can buy it the way it came instead of having it processed by somebody else. Dump her in there, some coarse ground black pepper. Well, folks, to get chicken really good and tender, a thing that I have learned a long time ago is, well, first, we're gonna steam it. I remember when I was on Chop Grill Masters and I was wrapping up some pork to put on the grill and wrapped it up in tin foil after I'd seasoned it, throwed it on there. I remember Mark Murphy, who was a judge, said, you're, you're cooking this sort of a French way. I said, I don't know about that, but I'm gonna cook it the tender way. Let's give it a good sprinkling. And you can say we got some wind blowing today. We do. So we need a little moisture here to go with this. And I've always done it this way. <clears throat> Just take you some butter, just lay them right up there on top. We need a little steaming effect to take here that's got some good flavor to it as well. Then we're gonna wrap these up tightly and do the thighs the same way. Got the Hasty Bake Legacy fired up. It is plum full of what? Fogo hardwood lump charcoal. and. Uh, it's hot, it just, it says 435 degrees, so that is hot. So remember we're in this tin foil. I'm about this far from it, so we're gonna crank it up just a tad. And we're going over the hottest part of the fire because really it's plumb level full in there. We're gonna shut the lid. We're gonna let her go probably about eight to 10 minutes, and then we're gonna flip it. We're gonna go another five, then we're gonna throw it on the smoker. Well, been on about 10 minutes we have, so let's just go ahead, maybe I can do that by hand. Yeah, flip them over. But I think we're gonna move them right back over here. And some of that butter may leak out, but don't you worry about it, it is quite all right. I need you to get a big pan, I'm talking big, that is heat worthy and safe, and go ahead and just set it right there. We need to be preheating that deal a little. And talking about veggies, oh yeah. Red bell pepper, yellow bell pepper, green bell pepper, jalapeno, and a big honking large white onion. So go ahead, got a half a stick of butter. Go ahead and throw her in there. But see what I was talking about? We need a large pan. Get your veggies and your butter stirred up there a little. You remember that leftover fajita seasoning that we had right there? Don't think it was going to waste, no. So just go ahead and sprinkle all in there, and get the rest of it. We're gonna shut the lid, open the door here a little, throw us in some mesquite to give us some smoke flavor. Well, folks, it is time to get the chicken off her. You can see that everything is beginning to bubble in that pan, which is good. Be careful when you're opening that foil, it will try to burn your fingers if it gets a chance. Things have getting right along the half. So take that chicken out. We're gonna put them right over here so we can give them a little smoke. Lay them breasts right there in the middle. We'll try to keep these thighs sort of over to one side. Your chicken is near done when you're to this point. Now we're just giving it some more color and a little smoke flavor. We'll shut this lid. You say, what is that contraption he's using? That is our new Roughneck Smoker. We teamed up with Hasty Bake, we did. Everything will latch down smoke tight. I mean, it will keep that temperature at a constant. But folks, we need to go ahead and open this up and we need to add us in two chunks of apple wood. So let me get them in there. 350 to around 365, I imagine, is the correct temperature that I would like for you to run that smoker at. But also remember, them thighs are thinner, so it's probably just gonna take about six minutes. We're gonna do them. Flip them at about three, turn them over, they'll be ready to come off there in about six minutes. But them chicken breasts, remember, they're thicker, they're bigger. So probably gonna take pretty close to eight to 10 minutes. We're gonna probe them, look for an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit.
Now, you've seen me right there at the end bring them chicken breasts back over here. Chop them up in them thighs too. Put them in there and mix them up a little. Uh, I'm going to give you a little tip. If you think that you're running out of moisture in here where all these vegetables is, either add some more butter or add you a little chicken broth to it because you don't want that to dry out in there and scorch them veggies too much. But also, folks, we done made us some of them homemade tortillas. Yeah, I'm talking Shan's recipe. I mean... There is a video up there to where you can see it. But, folks, the secret to it bacon grease and then folks we done made up some green salsa because i really love me some green salsa with some chicken fajitas some tomatillos a serrano now i'm gonna tell you right now some of you saying oh he said serrano that's like the temperature of the sun <laughs> no it's not because we're just putting one in there now for me i'd put two onion garlic serrano roast them tomatillos it is good blended up oh it is so tasty but also, since I'm dealing with chicken, I like to give it just a little squeeze of lemon juice and a little squeeze of lime juice. And if somebody would pass the tequila, we'd be thinking, what, 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 Cinco de Mayo here in February, March, and April? So, I've been waiting on this, but before I do, folks, I've got to let that cool just a little more because I had a lot of really good help today. If Shannon pan around, I'm it looks sure like... They were all Big has stayed awake throughout the whole deal. Duker said he's trying to make a hand because he heard the word food. So, Duker, we're going to let you go. No, we're letting Duker go first today. And then we're going to let the big. Then we're going to let the mage. And Lulu, where are you? And Cletus is, doesn't even know over there that there's anything going on. Shan, look at him behind you. With the homemade fajita seasoning plus the smoke that you're getting on it. Mm. Meiji, that is so good. I just want to go ahead and get you up here. Folks, y'all been watching. Me and Meiji going to do a little Mexican serenading dancing here because this video is filmed right before Valentine's Day it is. And two years ago on Valentine's Day, Meiji come to live with us for this forever home. He has changed our life. I know he's brought y'all some good memories too. Meiji, thank you so much, buddy. What side dish would you pair that with? fork and a napkin that's I mean that'd go really good but no our refried beans video would go really well with this but also we have a Mexican rice video and both of them are oh so easy and going to bring extra flavor to your table get the family around make these don't go to the store and buy the tortillas these are the easiest things in the world that you're ever going to make so we just want to thank you again from the bottom of our hearts, letting us in your living room, your dining room, your telephone, your truck, wherever you might be, we appreciate it. Everything that we use today will be listed down there in the little links below. You won't have no trouble finding it, I promise you. If you'll just hit the little deal that says show more, it'll take you plumb down through there. But it is with great pride and honor, and it's always a privilege to get to salute all our servicemen and women and all the veterans who have kept that old flag of flying in camp wherever we're at. We appreciate you one and all, we do. The rest of you, I'm just going to tell you right now, be sporting a new hat, be looking like swab and debonair. I am yeah, on who, who, What is your new hat? Well, I thought nobody was ever going to ask. This, you know, y'all seen me wear a lot of hats. Some of them, you think people will be saying, boy, I hope the dirt don't fall off that thing getting the food. This is a brand new hat from my good friend that has always made my hats, Chaz Mitchell Custom Hats. And I, I want to show you right in here. See this? I mean, folks. That is what you call style and class. There'll be a little link down there to where you can find out about Chaz. I'm just gonna tell you, his hats are in so much demand that there is a great waiting list. But get your name on the list, folks. Best hats ever made. What we're gonna do, we're gonna talk about fajitas. Oh, you can give a hug. I'm fixing it. you give a hug? I'm going to. I don't so the rest of you, come on in here close. Get in here close. I need to give you a big old fajita hug oh, and mash you a little bit. God bless you each and every one, and I'll see you down the best chicken fajita trail ever. My gosh, my nose is itchy. Must be people coming to see us. Major, first of all, is there like a nose hair up in here? Oh, jeez. Uh, we don't get no better than that. Like, it don't get no better than that. When you got to go, that didn't rhyme, so we'll start over. <laughs> mm. People on me all the time. 
Shan don't never get a bite. Shan oh, don't I never get a bite. Oh my gosh, I already When I went to the house, I come back, Shan <laughs> eat two tortillas and 14 of these, so don't be telling me that Shan ain't got no bite. 